Hi, my name is Geert van Gehle. I would like to talk to you today about how you can execute trills, as well as how you can go about to learn double tonguing on your recorder. These are advanced techniques for playing the recorder. The video is part of a series that accompany the iBook Thoughts on the Recorder, which is available through my webshop kattenbergrecordings.be. You can find a link in the description. And I've also included a clickable link at the end of this video if you want to learn more about it. Here is a good trill exercise. Start by slowly moving one finger up and down, as slow as one note per second, while continuously blowing. In steady increments, you can now speed up gradually. It is important that you do stick one to one tempo until you convince yourself that your finger has been keeping time perfectly. Only then are you allowed to increase the speed slightly. If you experience difficulty in keeping your speed steady, you may want to refer to a metronome. When you are in need of taking a breath, just take a breath and continue as if nothing happened. There is no need to start playing slowly again. As you are speeding up, Keep your finger as relaxed as possible at all times. The only thing you are allowed to do is slamming down your finger, followed by immediately relaxing it in the air. Remember, both notes must be equally long. Also, there's no need for throwing away the finger, just relaxing should do the job. At higher speeds, the slamming down will not be necessary anymore, and your finger will go up and down easily and smoothly. But Check for your quality. When you want to learn double tonguing, the best way to familiarize yourself with double tonguing is to start without the recorder and by engaging your speaking voice. Pronounce the sound do ku do ku do ku aloud. Do it slowly and very legato. Make sure the sound U is quasi uninterrupted. Listen carefully for a distinct click in the consonants D and K. These clicks should sound equal in strength. Now slowly speed this up, while making sure that the legato stays intact. Focus both on the sound U being uninterrupted and on the clicks. The faster you go, the more tendency you will have to make the notes shorter. Make sure they stay long legato. The wrong thing to do is So make sure you do Beware also for unequal rhythms. The do has to be as long as the ku, and for unequal attacks, the d needs to be equally strong to the k. Mistake that often students make is do ku 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 do. Do you notice the unequal do with the ku, and also the d being a lot stronger than the k. Before increasing the speed, you should be able to keep the same tempo up for a decent amount of time, say at least 10 seconds. You can do the same exercise without the recorder and without the voice before you practice on your instrument.
and so on. The tongue is so agile and adaptable that when you practice this daily, you will find that in a couple of weeks time, you will be able to achieve quite a high speed. The nice part of practicing without recorder is that you can do this at any given time of the day or night. I remember as a kid practicing this at night before falling asleep. When you want to learn the double tonguing doodle, uh, you should first teach yourself the doodle separately. Now, keep the tip of your tongue fixed behind the front teeth at the alveolar ridge, where normally you pronounce the D. At the same time, keep the part of your tongue situated below the tip, away from the palate, so that it, only the tip is reaching the, 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 the alveolar ridge. The very back of your tongue is touching your top molars on both sides. By doing this, you can easily have the sides of the tongue more or less curled upward, creating a bit of a container of air, of air, a bit like what a spoon would hold. This container will provide the necessary air for creating the dull sound. While the tip remains fixed, bring the middle of the tongue upward and at the same time pronounce the sound dull. You can also think of it as the spoon now turning inside out. You will notice that by doing this, air will escape simultaneously on both sides of your tongue. It's a good practice to have this done a few times in a row with only the dull sound. When it starts to work, you can add the do sound in front of it. Again, do make sure to exercise the dull sound in such a way that it will become as strong as the do sound. This may take some time. If you found that touching the top molars with the back of your tongue is being too difficult for now, you can leave this off for the time being. Chances are that you will automatically start applying this when you are developing your speed. At this point, you can refer back to the section of DQ for further development. Make a note. Make sure to produce the sound of DL as one sound. In other words, the D is incorporated in the sound. If you are only producing an L sound, you are not on the right track. So, do, do. It provides two clicks, whereas do, do, only one. If you find yourself to be in this case, please go through this section again. There's a third uh, double tonguing I would like to explain. Tu ru. Tu ru is very useful, especially in French repertoire. I would call it a semi double tongue. In French repertoire, you cannot do without it, for one thing because it's described as obligatory in historical treatises. And it also fits perfectly with the French language. When listening to French speech, one can easily detect a similar inequality in the rhythm of the syllables and words, in the same manner that turu, 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 turu provides. This will happen in uh, unequal runs of 8th or 16th notes in the score. I call it a semi-double tonguing because the tongue doesn't really provide a second articulation on returning towards the ridge, but instead the two is being followed by a trigger-like articulation of one cycle of a rolling R. Because a rolling R rr, makes the tongue very agile, this articulation can become relatively fast. For myself, I have never been able to bring it up to speed of another double tonguing. People in the part of the country where I grew up don't speak with a rolling R, rather with a so-called French R or guttural R. So for me it didn't quite work to have the rolling R. Luckily, 
my teacher could provide me with a technique to simulate one cycle of a rolling R. To do so, one pronounces a soft, airy D, while blowing a bit of wind above and under the tongue. And this works pretty well and is also taught very easily to students. Do, 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 do. So I just think of pronouncing the letter D. Then there is triple tonguing, which builds on the ability of playing two articulations very fast after one another. Indeed, it is possible to say two times do much faster than it's to say five times do. Do 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 instead of do 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 When you apply this in combination with normal double tonguing, one has a perfect solution of playing fast triplets or any other fast groupings of three. The possible articulation possibilities are do 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 or Note the two consecutive Ds in the first example and the two Ks in the second. Exercising these can be done in exactly the same way as with double tonguing. Other types of double tonguing can be applied in the same manner. Some people are able to maintain their double tonguing while dividing this over groups of three notes. Duku duku duku. Somehow I was never able to wrap my head around this. That's all for now. If you follow the link you can watch the next video in which I will explain the workings of explosive tonguing and how to safely execute top notes and what breathing accents are. This video is also part of the advanced technique section of the iBook. Thanks for watching.